All right, so here's the question that comes from um, Ryan that I had to extract and put into a notepad file because it's very thorough. <laughs> so I'm going to read through this, guys, briefly. I, I feel like I should be able to answer this kind of quickly, uh, but it's I'm probably going to spend as much time reading the question as I am answering it. <laughs> so bear with me. And guys, just for everybody else, um, try try to limit your questions or be a little bit more succinct in your questions when asking. And I'm not picking on you, Ryan. Uh, just please understand that, you know, we have only an hour every week. <laughs> and when I got to spend 20 minutes on one question, it's not really fair to others. And um, so anyways, like I said, I'm perfectly OK. I'm going to try to roll through all this. But it, just for everybody else's benefit, if you guys can be a little bit more succinct when you post a question, it's uh, that's preferred. All right, so this one says, I have a new client. I built out I built out the website for a Michigan-based service area business, heavy on additional service area keyword plus location pages, which I'm not crazy about that, but okay. Uh, because of the nature of the business, I need to drive traffic from surrounding areas, but they now just launched the same service in a different far away state. So I am thinking about restructuring the website to have a basic homepage with a hero section, uh, with hero section buttons that say something like choose your state with a button for each state, Michigan and Arizona, and some basic contact info or something. Then build out site.com slash Michigan and site.com slash Arizona. So these, in a sense, would be their own home pages. And each directory will be, a, in a sense, be its own site uh, with its own work per, per, excuse me, portfolio. Just because I think people in Arizona want to see custom homes from Arizona, Arizona, not Michigan, or maybe I have tabs on the portfolio page, not sure. Its own footer with location information. Uh, but this will also help with the site structure of the service area pages for each state. Um, so I'm going to reference this in just a minute. That URL is completely way over optimized, guy uh, uh, Ryan. So I'm, I'll give you some suggestions on that. And I'm going to give you some others in a minute. But let me finish reading this. Of course, business citations in GBP will link to location pages where they have a real office. That's correct. That's what I call location landing pages, and that is how you should do it. My main question is, do you see any issues with the setup? Do you like this approach? Yes and no. There's some things I like about it, some that I don't, and I'm going to explain that in just a minute. Um, basic homepage, not a lot of content to rank for brand only. I love that, and I do recommend that. That's what I recommend for all multi-location businesses, guys. Um, even if the original location was originally linking to the homepage URL because that was the location landing page because it was a single location business. And that's perfectly normal. OK, that's perfectly normal. But if the company then decides to expand and add another location somewhere, then do not, in my opinion, you should not keep the homepage URL as the location landing page URL for the for the original and primary location. You should create a dedicated location landing page. And look, even for single location businesses. If it's a single location business this, uh, th business that has multiple categories, product or service categories, then it makes more sense to link to a dedicated location landing page from the GBP than the homepage, even for single location businesses. Be and here's why. Because we'll talk first in the, uh, in the context or the terms of multi-location, and then we'll talk about multi-product or service categories for a single location business. But first let's address this as a, because the, the original question here, and this will be relevant to your question, Ryan, is um, if you've got a multi-location business. Okay, so number one, if you have a multi-location business, then you wanna have a dedicated location landing page for each location. And thereby, therefore the homepage should then be optimized for brand. And then call, you don't have to try to rank the homepage for anything. The rent, really, if you think about it, the homepage should only really be ranking for the brand search if it's a multi-location business. Right. You should be ranking the dedicated location landing pages for any keyword plus location modifier or any general keyword product or service keyword search query that the, the location landing page is what should rank if somebody does a general product or service uh, search uh, product or search product or service search query without a location modifier then you want the location landing page that is most relevant and, and closest proximity to them to be the one that ranks not the home page. Right. Or if they do a product or service plus near me search query, again, location landing page should rank or product or service plus city modifier. Again, location landing page should be the one that appears in search for that, not the home page. So if you have a multi-location business, then you can de-optimize the home page to be more about the brand and whatever call to action, some sort of compelling copy and essentially like an ad headline. But I would always start with the brand. Again, I see this all the time in audits. 
the home page, people lead with keywords, et cetera. When shouldn't the home page be in, in a lot of cases I see where they don't even have the brand name mentioned on the home in the SEO title of the home page. Are you kidding? Like that's just it's crazy to me. It's the home page of a brand. Why wouldn't you mention the brand name? So what I always recommend doing is the brand name should be the first part of the SEO title for the homepage, full stop, period. Because that should be the brand page, period. Like again, full stop. Think about that. The brand, the homepage of a brand, of a uh, uh, a local business brand that can have, whether it's single location or multiple locations, the homepage should focus on the brand, period. So again, with the multi-location business, I recommend, and, and since you're not trying to, you shouldn't really be trying to rank the homepage for anything other than a brand search, then why not just optimize for brand and then you can put some sort of compelling ad copy, so a call to action in the SEO title. And then what I like to do for multi-location businesses is if all of the locations, which typically multi-location local businesses are all going to have locations that are in uh, you know, one specific region or maybe in a, one state, et cetera. And so what I like to do is then optimize the homepage for the, the appropriate location modifier. Uh, the broadest location modifier that is also the most specific. Hopefully that makes sense. So what I mean by that is if all of the locations are in the same region, uh, which most of the time for multi-location local businesses, they are in the same region, then you can address, you can reference that region. Go to Wikipedia and search. Search the city name of wherever GBP is. And then you can search, uh, you can usually on the Wikipedia city page, it's going to tell you which county that city is in. Or you can even do a Google search for what count what county is city in. And then it will pull up and you can pull up the county. You can also, and then a lot of times when you look at the county Wikipedia pages, it'll tell you if the county is part of a larger region. So for example, in Virginia, there's Northern Virginia, there's several regions, but in Northern Virginia, that covers pretty much all of the counties in Northern Virginia by Washington, D.C. and Maryland, et cetera. There's also the metropolitan Washington uh, uh Washington metropolitan area, which is also known as the DMV, et cetera. So again, there's different regions There's the, and they can get bigger and broader. And all I'm saying is you want to kind of optimize for the broadest regional term that is most specific. Now, in this case, you're talking about Michigan and Arizona. Um, so in that case, you could on the homepage potentially reference both of those states because they're not really in one dedicated region, if that makes sense. Uh, but again, you're not trying to rank the homepage then. So yes, in that case, I would, I would put on the homepage uh, the brand then whatever kind of compelling copy. And then you could always put hyphen Arizona and Michigan if you wanted. Um, but you can omit those entirely. You don't even have to have location mentions in the SEO title of the homepage. I just like to do it typically if we can position the website in Google's mind to be um, relevant to a particular region and then you silo by through site architecture, right? You structure the site to where you have dedicated location silos then it makes sense because the broader pages on the site, such as the home page and maybe the service pages, uh, product or service pages, could then be optimized for the product or service categories plus the region. And then the dedicated location pages or location silos would then be optimized for the top level topic or category term plus location modifier, which all are relevant and fall within that particular region. Does that make sense? But in a case like this, where you have something like Michigan and Arizona, which I don't know that those fall in, in any particular region, uh, then you could either omit those entirely or reference both of them, if that's clear. But I, I, to be honest, I like shorter SEO titles that are not for blog posts. They're fine to be real long and conversational. That's fine. But for top level pages that have a conversion goal, such as uh, lead generation pages, et cetera, I always try to keep the SEO title kind of short and succinct. So um, I would omit Michigan and Arizona from the SEO title of the homepage and just focus on Brandon and CTA, if that makes sense. Um, but so so hopefully that's clear. But then on each individual location page, that's where I would I would optimize for the primary, well, brand, but then the primary Google business category um, and then the specific city comma state, if that makes sense. All right. Now, in the context of a single location business, but multiple categories uh service categories and i'll come back and finish answering your question in a minute ryan but i, I don't want to i don't want to lose this train of thought because this is the other scenario even for a single location business where i recommend linking to a dedicated location landing page and that is for example let's use a um an hvac company that does hvac plumbing and electrical those are three very distinct service types service categories right there's hvac which has a ton of subservices there's plumbing ton of subservices 
and electrical, ton of subservices. But there's three very distinct categories. A lot of times HVAC companies will ref will list uh, HVAC contractor as their primary Google business category, which is that's fine. But in that case, if you if if you optimize the location landing page to for the uh, brand and in GB category, primary GB category, and in city and state, aren't you kind of limiting the site's ability? Especially if it's a homepage, is what I mean. If if you're linked, if it's a single location business and it links to the homepage, and the and the the, the preferred SEO title format, in my opinion, the way that I do it, the SEO title format for location landing pages. So I'm going to say for LLPs, right, is brand, GB, category. And then city, it's going to be the location modifier, but it's usually going to be city comma state spelled out is the way I like to do it. You can use an abbreviation for the state. It's fine. I prefer to reference it the way it is listed in Wikipedia. So what this is how I typically recommend it. But what I'm saying is if the home page is the location landing page for a single location business, but the business offers multiple product or service categories, as I just described, then wouldn't you be kind of pigeonholing the site? Because the home page would be optimized in this example for HVAC contractor here, but yet the company still provides electrical and plumbing services, two separate categories. So in that case, what I recommend is instead having, and this is, let me just kind of demonstrate this single location business. Okay. So what I would recommend for that then would be to, um, for the homepage, let's see, this would be, uh, the home page. Then, what I would do is optimize the, uh, change the location landing page from the home page to a dedicated location landing page, and then on the home page, I would optimize for brand first because, again, I just mentioned I would always recommend optimizing for brand first in the SEO title on the home page. Full stop because it should be the brand page, and then from there you could put a CTA, or in this case you could even say something like electrical or HVAC. Sorry, let me back up HVAC plumbing god damn it if i could type and electrical god damn it <laughs> i can't type and talk at the same time and then you could put you know the region so let's just say northern virginia right if i was uh if this was a northern virginia contractor i just mentioned that region that's why i brought that up guys um so anyways hopefully you guys understand that and then what i would do is on i would create and see again i can't spell i would create a separate dedicated location landing page uh, that would be linked to from the GBP that would it then reference the specific city that the GBP is um, uh, physically located in, and then also the primary Google business category. And so if the primary Google business category is HVAC contractor, which like I said, most of the time contractors that do all three of those services will list HVAC because that is kind of the broader category. Uh, that That's just usually what I see. But in any case, then I would do this brand, slash oops god damn it did it again <laughs> uh hvac contractor and then i would do the specific city so let's just say fairfax virginia for example which is located in northern virginia hopefully that's clear does that make sense so then again what i'm saying here guys is you broaden up the entire theme, theme of the site both in product or services is uh and also as far as geography Right. If that makes sense. So you can, well, uh, again, why I bring that up is because I see, you know, I, I recommend always optimizing the, the location landing page, which for single location businesses is oftentimes the homepage this way as, with this kind of cat this, this optimization. But in some cases, when there's multiple service categories, that creates a problem that creates an issue because then you're kind of limiting the, the, the site you're, you're basically telling Google from the homepage that this site is mainly about HVAC contracting, but wait a minute, we also offer these other two. So that's why I said, I, in that case, I like to kind of de-optimize and broaden up the topical categories, so the product or service categories, and also the geography, the region, essentially, the geography area, et cetera, uh, of the site or the brand by um, broadening up at the homepage and then having the dedicated you know, category, service categories, et cetera, and then having a dedicated location landing page where I would reinforce the primary Google business category. But the rest of the site would still be optimized to prove to Google that it provides those other categories and services, et cetera. Hopefully that's clear. All right. So that was a, a, a good question from Ryan. Let me go back and try to finish this. Maybe the location pages will be buried because I need 
state subdirectory pages and county subdirectory pages and city subdirectory pages. I think I will make each of these a strong landing page. So to get back to this question, I'm going to specifically the the silo structure of this type of a build can become incredibly complex. And that's it's called a complex silo. A simple silo would be top level categories and in supporting posts. You're talking about top level categories, then subcategories, then supporting posts, and possibly even one layer further, one layer level deeper. Um, and that becomes incredibly difficult to manage. It, it becomes overly complicated in my opinion. Yes, you can do it that way. But what I would recommend is that you instead create subdomains that depending on how broad your this company or this project wants to go in Arizona and, and or Michigan, you could create either state specific subdomains if they plan on being, you know, expanding and having a lot of broad territory coverage in each state, or you could optimize for, for example, a region or a county at the subdomain level uh, for each one of those states and then have a dedicated site build on that because now it's a separate build, right? It's still part of the overall brand because it's on a subdomain. Then on the homepage, the root domain, the homepage and root domain of the, of the, of the domain for the, for the brand, then you can reference in the navigation menu, like service areas or locations, and then drop down Michigan, Arizona, and it would link to the subdomain site and vice versa. On the subdomain sites, you link back up to the primary root domain. So essentially the root domain becomes a brand that show a brand site that showcases the brand and the products or services, and then references the specific location uh, sites that are separate builds because now you can build a simple silo structure or a less complex, complex silo structure that is state specific or region specific or county specific, depending on how broad of a geography they want to cover in each state. Does that make sense? And now you've got dedicated uh, builds for each one of those that when you build links and authority and relevance to each one of those subdomain sites, it will flow up and strengthen the entire brand, if that makes sense. Yes, there is more of a benefit by building, there's more of an SEO benefit by building them as subdirectories uh, of the root domain. There is slightly better benefit from that. But I like everything being done on subdomains because it completely separates the builds. It makes it easier to plan out. It makes it easier to manage. It makes it easier to add on to. It also makes it easier when it comes to um, building out branded assets and supporting assets, et cetera. All of that because it's much more clearly delineated, if that's clear. And so here's an example of that that I want to give you guys, uh, just show you. We I have this site that um, I've been talking about recently, showing you guys some examples of uh, sites that I've built with on this kind of a template using the felling.pro domain. And you can see that here's an example of what I'm talking about. Now, these are county-specific subdomains, but I'm going to show you what the root domain looks like as well because I, I told you guys I, I do a ton of experiment. If that's not what I wanted to click. I do a ton of experimenting um, and testing different site structures and different configurations of SEO titles, H URLs, SEO titles, um, H1s and H2s, et cetera, to try to see what kind of effect it has by rearranging things and all that. I've been doing that for two years now, testing a bunch of stuff. So felling.pro is like one of my favorite domains ever uh, because it is felling is the entity for tree removal. And uh, so felling.pro is really just a very short, succinct domain. And you can see that this is a this is a WordPress build on the root domain. And I've got some internal stuff built here. Um, actually, that's 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 actually a high level subdomain site. Um, so that's not a good example. This one right here, Pennsylvania, this is actually built as part of this root domain. But if you can see, as I was showing you, I've got, for example, this. Um, if I show you Kentucky, for example, we scroll down here and we click on this. This actually goes, look at the current domain or the, this, this page. This is an inner page of the root domain. But if we click on any one of these locations, you'll see that it goes to a subdomain because this is the actual, this is actually a subdomain site. And this one's actually built on high level, not WordPress. But you can see it, this one's louisville.felling.pro. Now what I'm doing is I'm I'm really trying I'm, I'm I actually prefer to do now let's go back to home oh sorry let me go back to felling pro, um, so I can make an example here, um so you can see in the Pennsylvania pages though Pennsylvania again the state page was an inner page of the root domain, but then this one I actually have built down this apparently the map got something screwed up there but if I click into like Westchester for example you'll see now this is an inner page that, again I was testing with this 
and this is performing quite well. I'll show it to you in Zootrix here. If we go look at the Felling Pro, I've got the Pennsylvania pages. Uh, keywords is what I'm tracking here. And again, I've not really done any link building to this or anything, guys. This has just been sitting for about a year and a half without me doing anything. And you can see that it's ranking fairly well for a lot of like the location pages, supporting location pages, et cetera, that I've built as part of this page here. That makes sense. But then let's go take a look at the other two that I've more recently published, which again are now subdomains of the felling.pro site. And you'll see how I've optimized these on a county level. So like, for example, buckingin.fellingpro which is Buckingham County, Virginia. And so uh, all of these service areas here, these service location pages essentially are within this particular county. So the homepage is optimized for brand. And then uh, the primary category in this case is tree service and in Buckingham County. Now this could be optimized and set up for a county, it could be a region or an entire state is what I'm saying. But then you have in the service areas now, these are all these five locations or service uh, yeah, locations are, are within Buckingham County, Virginia. So you can see how it's a very logical site structure. And so, again, going back to what I was showing, if we go back to the um, Felling Pro site, um, which is the, the root domain, this can be just basically a brand page that talks about the services. And then the location navigation menu item can go to each individual subdomain site. If that makes sense. And I I prefer to do it that way. So you can see, like I said, what I'm doing for, for, for builds right now, which are performing incredibly well, as I'm sticking with county base. Again, this could be done on a regional level too, but I'm sticking within a county so that the homepage of the subdomain site is optimized for a particular county. And then all of the location pages fall within that county. As I mentioned before, if, if, if we had additional areas that we wanted to uh, promote, we might broaden this up to a regional level instead. And it could, it could potentially go to a state level too. Um, but I, I typically don't recommend that because Google, you know, as you guys should know, Google's gone hyper-local. So why not hyper-localize their sites as well? And that's why I like the subdomain method. And they, they, they all perform really, really well. So again, guys, just to show you, um, this is the Bucking and Felling Pro site we were looking at. It looks like one key one keyword dropped, which is interesting. It just uh, and it's just normal. It's, it, but that one keyword that dropped pulled that average down. It was this one keyword here that dropped Tree Care Oakwood VA. But take a look at this, guys. Um, we've got ninety two out of ninety six keywords in the top five, and really that's forty eight keywords because it's just. But you, I mean, look at that. And that, that, go go check the backlinks on Buckingham Bucking and Felling Pro, guys. You'll see there's basically no backlinks built to it. And yet it's kicking ass. Very low competition area. I get it. But it's the point of this structure that I'm trying to show you, a, a kind of performance that when you build this way can perform incredibly well. Buckingham, or excuse me, uh, Berkeley Felling Pro is a more competitive area. Um, this is in Martinsburg, West Virginia. Look at this, guys. Again, I did some two tier one links and then did some tier two link building. And it's been steadily climbing up. And if we take a look at this again, look at, again, just go, this is Berkeley Felling Pro. You guys go check the backlinks there if you don't believe me. Look at how well this is performing. This site's maybe two months old, maybe 10 weeks old. And I've intentionally not been building links to it because I want to see how well it will rise up in the, you know, how, how well it will perform in search results before I start doing a lot of link building to it. Um, and you can, I mean, it's just been steadily improving since I published this site. And again, it's just about the structure, guys. I want to see how far this goes before I start building a lot of links to it. Um, and then I, once it kind of stalls out and stops improving and, you know, in uh, improving in positioning, then I will start to build more links to it and see, you know, how, how good we can get it. But again, guys, I'm just pointing this out because I, I've done a lot of testing over the last two years for multi-location businesses, single location businesses, different configurations of the site structure itself, the page structure, SEO title, H1, H2, URLs. I've tested a whole bunch of stuff over the last couple of years, and I've settled on this type of a format as the best performing type of site for a service area business. I've not applied this to a storefront type of business because I don't work with those types of businesses. But uh, for service area businesses, this performs incredibly well. So I would encourage you, Ryan, with your multi-location business uh, uh, project that you would consider that method instead. Okay? Okay. Um, would I be all better off just having all location links in the footer and all locations NAP? No, I don't recommend that because then that co confuses Google. If you you in, if you were to build it as you were recommending up here with silos on the root domain, then any of the pages that are sub sub or supporting pages, subordinate pages to Arizona, for example, 
then you would reference on all of those pages only the location pages. If you wanted to do it site-wide, like in the footer, for example, you would only reference the supporting pages that are within Arizona in the Arizona pages. And likewise, Michigan pages in the Michigan pages, which means you would have to have custom footers uh, or footer sections, elements, whatever you want to call them, that would be applied to their specific, you know, uh, location silos, if that's clear. But you don't want to do that. All the Michigan uh, locations and all of the Arizona locations and the NAPs in the footer of every page, because that confuses Google. It sends mixed signals, right? You want to be more specific about um, what data you're referencing within each silo when you're talking about multiple locations and location silos. If that's clear. But again, that's part of the reason why I love this type of a project, guys, because here's the, the point about the subdomain sites are now you can do what I call one great big reciprocal link where every page and a dedicated subdomain build is uh, links to every other page in that dedicated subdomain build, because now it's all relevant to each other as opposed to trying to separate or segregate everything like I just described, which is why I don't recommend uh, multiple location across multiple state builds on one domain. I, I prefer to I prefer to do that via subdomain builds as I've just described. Because again, coming back here to this, if we go look at the services, the services link to all of the locations right here, right? All the location pages. And each of the location pages link to all of the service pages. So it's one great big reciprocal link, but it makes sense to do so because it again, this entire site is optimized for all locations within Buckingham County, Virginia. Does that make sense? So it, there, there's no need to try to segregate or separate silo linking. There is no silos on this site. This site is service pages, location pages, and they all interlink with each other. Every every service page links to every location page. Every location page links to every service page. Does that make sense? Because it's all part of this one kind of geographical area. And so it, there's no need to do that. Now, I'm not saying like in my in this particular industry, all of the services fall under one category. Right. But if you going back to my example of like an HVAC plumbing and electrical contractor, um, then I would have three separate service silos. And then I would have my location pages and my location pages would link to the top level service page for each of those service silos. And then each service page would link to every location page. Does that make sense? So anyway, that's a really good question. Um, I, I said it was going to be a long one, guys, and I <laughs> I think I uh, I think I would write. All right. Also, doing it this way seems someone from Arizona will always be in the Arizona section. Again, that's why I prefer the subdomain method, because you get you get you get people on the appropriate site and they stay there. Whereas if you try to put everything on one domain on the route, then it it, it can people can get lost into the site. Uh, but if you've got navigation done properly and everything. It shouldn't be a problem. But again, I, I for all the reasons I just mentioned, I prefer the subdomain method. Okay. And that's how I'm doing all of my site builds right now because through mul much testing, guys, I found that these by far outperform all other configurations. Um, with I mean, it's just incredible. And by the way, guys, this type of a build, because of the internal linking, do you realize when you build a link to any page on this site, it actually flows through the entire site? There is no top up or bottom down uh, uh, excuse me, top down or bottom up internal linking on this, like I've tried to do for many years with silos and everything else. This site is one great big reciprocal link, which means if I build links to any page, any one of the pages on this site, it's going to flow through to every other page of the site. That makes sense. So it becomes much more efficient for link building and everything else this way.